Our next guest is fighting Stefan Struve at UFC on Fox 13, December 13th. He's one of the most accomplished heavyweights in MMA. Ladies and gentlemen, Alistair Overeem is on Submission Radio. Alistair, welcome back to Submission Radio. How's it going? Thanks for having me. Well, it's an absolute pleasure, Alistair. Now, last time you were on the show, you were on your way to a theme park. Uh, the burning question is, how's your day at the theme park? What rides did you go on? And was Alistair over him scared at any point of the roller coasters? <clears throat> yeah, that theme park probably was, uh, I, I, don't, I don't remember the name, but it was uh, one small theme park here in Albuquerque, and it totally sucked. Uh, that's a shame. <laughs> well, other than riding roller coasters, what else have you been up to? Well, um... Actually, just uh, training, training, and uh, you know all the things that surround the the, the sporting career. Uh, I just had my daughter in Miami, so I spent some time with her <clears throat> for her birthday. And uh, other than that, just training, training for this fight. I mean, it's uh, it's very important to fight coming up December 13 against my fellow countryman Stemmer Stru. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I take every fight serious, but. Uh, yeah, this this is gonna be another big one. So uh, I just been dedicated, just been going to the gym, eating healthy, making sure to have everything in order uh, behind the scenes, which is sparring partners, coaches. Um, I'm actually also uh, preparing to uh, come to Australia uh, to do some appearances there uh, early next year when the weather still is good. So mm -hmm. you know, just been busy, a lot of activities uh, behind the scenes. Well, Alistair, we're a little bit disappointed because I think originally you were going to come down for Stereo Sonic, which is a huge festival here in Australia, you know, full of great music. Unfortunately, um, you know, there's a great fight popped up. So you are getting back into training camp and unable to come down. I was just wondering, you know, it is a little bit, it's not a quick turnaround, but you were in the, uh, fighting only a few months ago. Um, what, what went behind your decision to fight Stefan in December? Um, was, it, was it the fact that he seemed like a great opponent? Was it the card that really drew you towards fighting him? No, UFC uh, decides the opponent. So they decide the opponent. And, um, yeah, can you, can you fight then and then against this guy? Yeah, sure I can. For me, um, i rather prefer to fight soon um, because I'm still in the rhythm of, of things. And, you know, in the last fight, I didn't have any damage. I was on Dr. Haas. It was like... Well, even though I didn't lose, and uh, I still believe, and I know 10 times I beat Ben Rockwell. But even though I, I, I did lost the fight, I didn't have any damage. So what is the reason to not fight? Well, in regards to your yeah. loss against Ben Rothwell, you know, you trained, obviously, at Greg Jackson's and Mike Winklejohn's. Uh, you know, a lot of people were excited to see a new Alistair. Unfortunately, because the fight ended so quickly, we didn't see, you know, possibly a lot of those new tools. I was wondering, you know, hey, what, what was the game plan going to the fight and um, would you be possibly interested in a rematch with Ben Rothwell? Yeah, I, I, I don't really discuss game plans, but um, <clears throat> looking what I, you know, considering what I'm doing with my sparring partners, I know how, how dominant I am. I know what I'm doing to him. I know my cardio was was, was excellent. I was in the, one of the best shapes ever. Mm. And um, that being said, uh, I would love a rematch with Ben. I still believe nine out of ten times I beat him easy. Uh, no sweat. But, you know, Getting caught is part of the game. It's uh, the X factor that exists. Um, I've been fortunate to uh, never really been caught before like this. Uh, and, uh, you know, I've had like 75 fights by now. <laughs> so, um, considering that, you know, bad luck happens. You know, in the sport, you need a bit of luck on your side. And Ben had it in, 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 in our last fight. Luck was, was on his side. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and speaking of the fight, um, early on, one of your kicks damaged Ben's arm. How badly did you think Ben's arm was hurt um, when you saw that kick land? Well, it was, uh, <clears throat> I thought it was hurt enough that he wanted to punch with it. And, and probably, you know, if the fight would, uh, would have continued a, uh, a couple more minutes uh, or, you know, even in the break, pain would have set in and it would definitely uh, have a effect on it. Mm. Now, uh, you know, you talked a lot about how great the training was at Jackson's Winkle Johns and, you know, the support network. Those guys are real geniuses down there, and they seem like they'd be good for mental support as well. What sort of advice did you get from uh, Coach Wink and Coach Jackson afterwards or right after the fight? Uh, not really that much advice. It was just like, take it easy, let's watch some tape, and then we'll slowly we start building again. You know, uh, everybody um, was in an agreement that stuff like this happens. Mm. Um you know, it happens. It's the same as, um, yeah, Bigfoot against Kane. 
gift card. It's over. You know, it's 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 both the beauty and the uh, and and um, and the, the, the nice and the bad side about the sport. Sometimes mm-hmm. it happens. And, you know, recently, speaking of Jacksons, recently one of your past opponents and training partners, Travis Brown, left Jacksons to go to the Glendale Fighting Club. I was just wondering, what did you think when you uh, heard that Travis left? And who are your primary training partners going to the fight with Stefan Struve? You know, we'd imagine you need some tall training partners as well to mimic his style. Well, um, first and foremost, of course, uh, light heavyweight chairman John Jones. Um, great, great guy and great sparring partner. Um, and then we have Cody East, who just uh, turned legacy uh, heavyweight champion. And we're going to bring in some tall guys, um, yeah, for this camp. So, yeah, I've, I've got good sparring partners. I'm, I'm, I'm totally not worried about that. And um, what Travis is concerned, yeah, he's a tall guy, too. I actually was looking forward to training with him, but uh, apparently he chose uh, to do his training elsewhere. Um, yeah, that's up to him. I mean, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a free country. It's a free world. So he needs to go where he feels uh, at his best. Fair enough. We spoke to Kyle Noak recently who said, you know, everything's fine between him and Travis even though he's left. I just wanted to confirm, everything's cool with you and Travis even though he's training in Glendale Fight Club? Yeah, sure. This is going to be your second training camp going into a fight with Jackson's Winkle Johns. I was just wondering, obviously, um, the first time around, you were just, you know, getting used to working with everybody, uh, getting used to the coaches. What's it like, you know, you just got to Albuquerque, you know, a few days ago. What's the vibe like now going into the Stefan Strew fight in the training camp? Uh, the vibe is good. Just back to work. I just got it a couple of days ago, so... You know, there's there's not really that much to talk about. I mean, it's it's back to work, back to training. Vibes are are excellent. Um, yeah, it's all positive. It's all beyond positive. I did the first part of my camp in Miami. I had MMA Masters. Had a great uh, connection there as well. And we're gonna finish up the camp here, and from here we're gonna go to Phoenix, which is like uh, 30 minutes uh, plane. So everything's positive. Awesome. Now, Alice, you mentioned that this fight against Stefan Struve, it's another big one. I just wanted to get your opinion. You know, what makes this another big fight? And uh, what are some of the strengths that you see in Stefan Struve that you'll have to look out for? Well, he's a tall guy. He's definitely going to be using his reach. He's got his submission game. Um, overall, I think I'm better. I think I'm better in the stand I think I've got better wrestling, and I think I've got better ground. So, but, you know, that X factor remains. And... Um, yeah, you know, you need to have the luck a little bit on your side, too. I do believe that you can force the luck with a lot of hard work. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, we just need to pick ourselves up, get back at it. And that's that's exactly what we've been doing. So I'm actually looking forward to getting there again and uh, close the year where we win. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Alistair, it really seems like you and Stefan get along well and you have a lot of mutual respect for each other going into this fight. Um, you know, obviously, Stefan has had some issues with anxiety. He had, he had some heart issues as well. Tell us, you know, what are your thoughts of Stefan as a fighter? And, you know, what, what's your relationship like with him? Well, we met uh, a couple of times, but uh, we don't really have a relationship. We're co we're, we're, we're each other. He's, he's uh, also from Holland. Uh, there's mutual respect. But other than that, there's uh, nothing there. I was going to say, you know, and you, you probably are aware of this, but when Stefan was on the MMA hour, he mentioned that he did not think he did not think you were overrated. However, he wasn't too impressed by your record before the UFC. How do you feel about him saying that? Uh, I'm not going to, you know, I don't, I don't care about this kind of stuff. Absolutely. Now, you know, recently, um, the big the big title match that we spoke about with you last time when you were on the show, Fabricio Verdun versus Cain Velasquez. Cain got injured, and now Mark Hunt is stepping up at the last second uh, to verse uh, Fabricio for the interim title. What did you think when you heard the news, and who, who are you leaning towards in this matchup, Alistair? You know, at the heavyweight division, it can go either way. Hunt is an exceptional fighter, but Fabricio has been showing uh, great skill uh, in his last uh, several fights. It can go either way. Um, that being said, I give Fabricio a slight advantage. But Hunt is now the guy I fought him back in 2008. Mm-hmm. He's the strongest guy I ever fought. Um, you know, when, if you get hit, uh, yeah, you got a problem. So it's going to be an exciting matchup, and um, I'm actually uh, excited for that fight in a couple of weeks. Well, I mean, you know, New Zealand's like a neighbor to Australia, so you can imagine how excited we are as well. Um, obviously, you've mentioned yeah. you've mentioned a couple. Isn't, isn't he New Zealand actually? Well, yeah, he, yeah, he's from New Zealand, but he lives in Australia, in Sydney. 
Okay, just checking. Yeah. <laughs> now, you've mentioned a couple of times on our show that the title is still your goal. And obviously, you know, anyone in the UFC, that's what they're after. At the moment, you know, what do you think the journey to the belt looks like for you? How many fights do you think before you be fighting for the title? You know, I'm not even, I don't know, I'm not even thinking about a lot of stuff. You can, uh, you can think about it, debate that stuff, that's your job. Um, I'm focusing on the next uh, fight. And, you know, even, even besides that, I don't like to talk too much. Yeah, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You guys can talk about it, and uh, I'm just going to perform. December 13th, tune in. UFC Phoenix. Absolutely. And, you know, we do enjoy talking about all that stuff. Now, Alistair, we have some fan questions here for you. Uh, the fans knew you were coming on the show and they've sent in some questions. I have a question here from at Miss Takeover. Um, he'd like to know, you know, Alistair, most of your wins are via guillotine. He'd like to know, why haven't you used the technique as much uh, lately? And is would you use it if you saw more opportunities to use it in the future? Fan questions. I love them. <laughs> okay, so why don't I use the use the gym more? Because a fight uh, is like a dance. It takes two to tango. Um, a lot of opponents they train defense on the guillotine and they make sure they don't get in that position in the first place. So then there's no guillotine. Um, but rest assured, I'm training it. And when the uh, when the opportunity um, uh, presents itself, you'll see it back. It can be sooner, can be later, but uh, you'll see it back. Okay. Now, Fierce Red Belt has an interesting question. Uh, and, I mean, this is looking to the future. I know I know you're the type of guy that you focus on the, the thing that's in front of you, but what are your plans after your MMA kickboxing professional combat sports? You know, would you be a gym owner or anything like that? That is a great question. What will I do? Um, well, I'm 34 years old now. <clears throat> and um, that question does uh, resonate more and more. Uh, I am thinking about what I will do. Um, I'm not sure yet. I cannot answer that question yet, but um, I probably, I'm not sure if I will own a gym. I probably will start to teach, and maybe I will own a gym, because, you know, that that, that could be it. Um, I like I like to teach, though. I like to do the seminars. I, I can pre uh, teach a good one-on-one, good group classes, so probably something like that, uh, because it also uh, keeps you in shape. Um... Yeah, I, I couldn't answer beyond that. I am looking at some, some things, but I'm not going to discuss that here now on the show. May no. I just make a quick suggestion? You love music festivals. Yeah. Maybe you could be a DJ. You could travel the world and uh, you could attend all the festivals that you want. Well, I do like house music. I love house music. Being from Holland and uh, listening to the music for 18 years now, and I've always used house uh, as, as entrance uh, songs. Mm. So, um, yeah, cool. Let's do it. <laughs> you gonna book the flights for me in the clubs and everything? Yeah, sure, sure, <laughs> sure. I'll I'll find some guy's credit card. <laughs> <laughs> now, Alex, so the next question comes from Hatsu Hayoki. He'd like to know who's your favorite fighter of all, of all time, um, both from K1 and MMA. My favorite fighter? Mm, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, I like say you know I, I have. There's so much now, so many uh, uh, different uh, fighters who all um, hold their own. But uh, definitely Fedora, of course. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have the, the Gracies before that. Um, Sakuraba, I was a fan of him uh, growing up. Anderson Silva is great. John Jones is great. You know, there's so many um, great fighters. So, you know, even Cain Velasquez, great fighter. Mm -hmm. Tremendous heart. So I can I can uh, enjoy many other uh, fighters and also the lighter weights. Um, um, what's his name again? Um, Dillashaw, I believe it is. Or uh, yeah, Dillashaw. Yeah. TJ Dillashaw, super nice striking. So uh, yeah, I can I can enjoy uh, all different kinds of weights, weight classes. <clears throat> Awesome. Now, Alistair, we're going to finish off the interview with uh, the tap out round. It's a stock standard. We throw a bunch of fun questions at you and uh, basically you answer with the first thing that comes to your mind. But also, we just wanted to mention uh, there was another fan. He did not have a question, but his username is Reem Will Be Champ and he wanted to let you know that he's your biggest fan. Now, tap out round. Who's someone who you've been listening to on your iPod that you can't recommend or sorry, that you can recommend for us to check out? You mean house music? Oh, just in general. I'll, we would assume house music, but just in general. Me, myself, uh, you're talking podcasts or songs? Oh, so songs. Like, like so much out there now, nowadays. Okay, well, I, 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 um, 
uh, love what's his name again. I can't get his name. Um, of course, uh, Amberjack, buddy of mine, Fiesta. Yeah, yeah. Tippy Townsend, um, which always get me going is uh, Sonny Marciano. And, uh, 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 oh, man, I can't get the name. <laughs> Sonny and James and Ryan Marciano. We, we we feel we feel like you put we put you on the spot. Suffice to say, if anyone's ever watching an episode of The Ream, whip out Shazam and pretty much check out all those songs and get those because a lot of the songs that you got you use in The Ream are really good. Yeah, but I don't. Uh, they're not really commercial though. They're a little bit undercover. No, that that's what's good about. Them. We like the sneaky undercover stuff. Now, speaking of music festivals, what's the greatest music act that you've ever seen live? Um, I would say Ultra in Miami, Ultra Festival. Where was that in Miami? Yes, Miami uh, downtown. Okay. Now, uh, Alistair, give us the lowdown on the Octagon in Connecticut. It looked pretty small, especially when you and Beth, Ben Rothwell fought. Did you feel like the Octagon was small that night? Well, it was. It was, to my surprise. It was a little bit different than, uh, than I was used to. But, um, yeah, again, you know, it, it doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. Because you should, you, as a fighter, you need to adapt quick. Yeah. And you need to be able to fight in small environments, big environments, so that's, there's no excuse there. Now, the next step our question is from a fan called Brandon S. He'd like to know, what's the best place to live and retire on this planet? I would say Miami. Now, or Thailand. Uh, rules. Yeah, absolutely. Now, we asked you about dancing earlier. Uh, do we think we'll ever see Alistair Overeem on Dancing with the Stars in the future? And if you did end up on the show, what's the dance you think you'd be known for? No, I'm not going to do that kind of stuff. <laughs> uh, we've got another fan question in the tap out round here um, like it is would like to know he says I've been trying out horse meat as an alternative to steak but can't find the right seasoning he'd like to know if you have any tips well if you don't like to eat it then don't eat it no no he's saying he just he can't find the right seasoning like do you, do you have any seasoning tips for it um, just black uh, pepper and salt and finally, Alistair, how are you planning on finishing or beating Stefan Struve come December 13th on UFC on Fox 13? Well, of course, knockout in the first round. But again, it takes two to tango. But I do, um, I do have a very good feeling about this fight. Um, yeah, I do think this is, uh, this is going to be positive. Excellent. Well, we can't wait. I'm sure a lot of people got getting excited already just hearing you say the word knockout and uh, picturing it on December 13th. Guys, UFC on Fox, December 13th. If you're here in Australia in the future, it is December 14th. And you can follow Alistair on Twitter at Alistair Overeem. Uh, Alistair, it's always been a pleasure. Oh, and of course, his website, AlistairOvereem.com. Alistair, thank you so much for stopping by the show. Hey, thanks for having me, man. Yo.